What's going on, everyone? Thank you so much for tuning in. The infamous thermal couple. This small little piece of copperish looking tubing or wire with this silverish looking tip. You'll find this on most water heaters. You may find this on some old furnaces and some boilers. But how does it work? How they die? Everything has a life expectancy. How to test it, how to maintain it, how to make sure she's working good. Here we go. Here is a thermal couple in action. For aesthetic purposes only. And this is connected to a Honeywell VR8200. This is a standing pilot Honeywell 24 volt gas valve. You'll typically see this on some older furnaces and boilers. The pilot flame is always on 24 seven, 365. And if you notice real carefully, the tip of the thermal couple, the silver tip of the thermal couple is resting inside the pilot flame. The flame heating up that tip is creating a small millivolt charge, approximately 30 millivolts, which is then traveling through this copperish looking wire or tube to the gas valve. Now, when you blow out the flame or the gas is turned off, that thermal couple is gonna cool off and it's no longer gonna produce approximately 30 millivolts, keeping the gas valve open. We talk about how the gas valve works in video number one. So you may be asking yourself, how does this create electricity by being heated in a flame, right? Well, in order to answer that question, you have to understand what this is and how it works. A thermal couple consists, is made up of two dissimilar metals, two dissimilar metal wires that are joined together at one edge to form a junction, which is exposed to the temperature. And that will give you what we call, well, what these engineers call the Seebeck effect. So when the hot junction is heated or cooled, those electrons in the two metals move differently, right? And they create a voltage difference also known as an EMF or electromotive force. Now, I've never said that word before and I'm gonna keep it real, I just Googled it, but I never heard of Seebeck effect either. But when you have those two dissimilar metal wires, right, and they're exposed to temperature, you get that Seebeck effect, which makes sense because the voltage generation or the voltage difference that's measured in millivolts is proportional to this temperature difference between the hot and or cold junctions. Now, do we really need to learn about the Seebeck effect and hot and cold junctions and stuff like that? Eh, it's probably worth this information that you'll never have to hear again, except if you watch this video on repeat over and over and over again. And if you do, it's okay, just watch the ads, okay? But when you see a thermal couple, there's two dissimilar metals, wires, that form to meet at a junction point, and when that's heated, those metals create electricity. Not enough to power a light bulb, but enough to keep the magnet open on the pilot valve when you're holding that down, when you let go of that plunger on the standing pilot gas valve, when you let it go on the water heater. As long as there's enough current in the thermal couple, it'll keep the gas valve open, and it'll give you heat or hot water. So now let's talk about how to measure this. How do you test this? You know, I always say, if you ain't testing, you're guessing. And the next time you're at a no heat or no hot water service call and you come across a thermal couple, you're gonna know how to test it. I'm gonna show you real easy how to do it. We're gonna put this right here for right now. I'm gonna use a Fluke 116. This is a true RMS multimeter. Okay, I'm gonna set it to read millivolts. We're gonna take one 
of our leads that I have an alligator clip on. And we're gonna put it on the copperish looking tube or wire there. And the other end, I'm gonna put it right on the tip of the thermocouple. Hopefully it stays. Come on, baby, stay, okay? And we read zero. Now, I'm gonna try to bring this right there without melting my multimeter with the pilot flame. Now, the flame is there. Let me turn off the light so you see better. So we have our multimeter, it's reading zero millivolts. We have our pilot flame and we have our thermal couple, okay? Watch what happens as I bring the tip of the thermal couple into the flame. As it nears the tip of the flame, I am gaining in voltage. So right now, if it's just like at the end, hovering there, we're still getting around 18 in the high teens of millivolts, right? Now, typically, in order for a thermal couple to be testing good, you need to be 25 to 35 millivolts. So right now, the flame, you know, it's not really even, it's not even touching the thermal couple, but as I get closer to it, the heat from the flame is affecting the millivolt reading. And as I put the tip in the flame, we're gonna have a huge spike in our millivolt reading. We're at 20 millivolts, 22 millivolts, 24, 25, and slowly climbing. Now, if the more I engulf the tip or the thermal couple into the flame, the higher the number I get on my multi-reader, reading millivolts. And you're gonna see, we're kinda gonna max out at around 35 millivolts, 36, 36.5. But look at the tip of my thermal couple. It's getting cherry red. That is hot, 39 millivolts. And as I take it away, we drop. And I just lost a lead. Sorry, guys. And that's why if you were to turn off the, or blow out the pilot flame on your pilot burner, it stays on for a while until the thermal couple cools and drops below an acceptable millivolts, no longer keeping the gas valve, pilot burner valve open. I bring it back. 16, 17, 18, so on and so forth. Now, I'm just gonna carefully put this right there for now. And I'm gonna show you what happens when you blow out the pilot flame. Hopefully you'll be able to hear the click. Here we go. Still have the gas. Wait for it to click. There's that click. And the second that pilot gas valve closed, gas stopped flowing out of the pilot burner. And look, 6.5 volts, 6.4, it is slowly cooling. Now, a couple things to keep in mind. We'll start with the most important. This is a safety device. Just like a rollout switch, a spill switch, a limit like an Aquastat high temperature limit, they're all safety devices. And you should never modify or adapt this, right? And obviously, you don't bypass it. And I don't know if you can or not, but this is a safety device and it keeps the gas going when there's a proven flame. So keep that in mind. When you're servicing a heating system or your water heater and you have a thermal couple like this, you wanna check it out, test it like we just did. If it's reading under 20 or 15 millivolts, recommend a replacement because what's gonna happen is the next day, next week, next month, next year, you're gonna have a nuisance, no heat or hot water call you won't be able to relight the pilot and they'll need to replace the thermal couple. So either they're gonna wait until it fails, resulting in a callback, and whether or not, if it's the next day, next week, who's gonna be responsible party and paying for it? But unless you made them aware that, hey, you need to replace this, they're gonna to wanna to blame you probably. So recommend it, put it in writing, and if they decline it, it's all written down and documented. Next, examine it. Examine it for any cracks, damage, corrosion, Anything out of the ordinary, if you see oxidization forming on this, right, and it's turning green, guess what? Not only 
is the time to replace it, but to find out where and how it got wet. If there's any warpage or swollenness of the tip of the thermocouple, also recommend a replacement. Even if it's still working, even if it's within still a good millivolt range, recommend a replacement because it's an abnormal appearance. So the next time you run to a thermocouple, you're going to have a better understanding of how it works, how to test it, and how to make sure it's going to last. So you're not going to have to go back on a recall next day, next week, next month, next year. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this educational video, I tried to spin a little humor into it. But if you enjoyed it, I hope you subscribe. Every week, my goal is to put a video on the Mikey Pipes HVAC training channel here on YouTube, and I would appreciate your support. And the best way you can support the channel is by subscribing. Let me get your thoughts and feedback in the comment section down below. And don't forget, sharing is caring. Love you guys. Catch you in the next one. Be well. God bless. Stay safe.